Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to unbox this Double Bell 813S or 416. Hey guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do consider liking, commenting and subscribing because those interactions will help me get it seen by the YouTube algorithm and that whole little the channel grow if you want to spot the channel a little bit more socials are linked on my link tree uh, down in the description including a link to my discord and if you want to support the channel even more there is a join button down below that will take you to channel memberships 99 pence a month totally optional really appreciated but you get your own custom videos um your own private chat section in the discord uh, your own custom giveaways and that kind of stuff and i say on videos when they're released and a, a, a bit of influence over me i suppose in terms of what i get and an unbox on the channel so let's get started then. So another double bell unboxing. Uh, so this time then I have got the uh, double bell buffer force, or buffer cello, whatever you want to call it, um, 416 or the 813S just affectionately rolls off the tongue there. So as we've come to expect from double bell, the box is very little to nothing to look at, just plain brown box. Oh, I dropped it and nearly smashed my table up. Um, so very little on there at all um, overall. So let's have a look at what's inside here then. And boom, there it is. I'm not gonna lie, I am not always a big massive fan of um, four and sixes, but opening this up, I'm actually, it's quite an interesting looking piece actually. I quite like the look of this. So we've got our little um, sort of safety manual in there get that out of the way we've got a little accessory pack that has got uh, let's have a look a mag what kind of mag is it mid cap mid cap high cap it should be a that's a high cap there's no winding wheel is what's that in there let's have a look there's no winding wheel is that let's use the little allen key so there's a little double-ended Allen key. Oh no, this is, wait, 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 wait. So I'm guessing, I thought it was a flash mag, but I'm guessing that it's just a little rubber bung that's shoved in there. And that's just a blanking plate. What it is, yeah, that's a bit cringe, but that is a little Allen key. Yes. <laughs> that is a high cap with a winder. Um, wow, that's an, interesting choice okay but we're not here for the mag necessarily we're here more for the uh, the 416 itself so let's get that out of the way for now and bring this out so now straight away there is some real there is some real heft to that that has got a real nice weight into it now jiggling it about other than a bit of wobble in the stock there is nothing, it is looking and it feels stable. Twisting the two halves, nice and solid and stable. I am impressed at how solid that actually feels in my hands. So we've got an extended barrel that comes out uh, beyond the end of the rail unit. Uh, and we have got sort of like a bit of a triple color, quadruple color system going off. So we've got obviously one shade of tan for the stock and the pistol grip. We've got another shade of tan uh, for the body uh, the receiver and then we've got another shade of tan uh, for the rail unit like a bronzed color and then we've got obviously the black accessories and highlights and i actually quite like that sort of mix up of colors it does look quite different uh, and quite interesting so start at the front then and we'll work our way back so we've got a muzzle brake there that has got a little grub screw inside it so if you want to remove that, you will need to undo that grub screw and then it's a 14 mil negative thread. So it'll unscrew the opposite way. It does look like, and it, I am right, the outer barrel will also remove. Again, 40 mil negative and exposes the end. So that's quite a long inner barrel that we've got there running through that rail unit. So I'll screw that back on. Turn that down. We've then got our rail unit then, so integrated into the rail unit is our flip up front sight and our rear sight is at the back. Let's see if I can get anywhere close to aiming down those. Yeah, not quite. Ooh, there, look. There we go. 
So those are the front and rear sights, flip down, flip completely out of your way. I quite like that that's flush into the rail. You have got then a lot of space then to accessorize as you uh, see fit and need on there. And that rail is not moving. It's secured uh, by the looks of it with just this one big lug at the back here. Now it does look like that should be another mounting point for another screw block at the front there, but there isn't anything. Uh, we'll look at that in the disassembly video. But that's really nice and solid. Moving to the receiver then, uh, we've got obviously an ambidextrous selector that is nice and firm to move round into those three positions. It feels really good to get round. Uh, we've got a uh, ambidextrous uh, mag release there to get that out and let's see oh, it do oh yeah not quite the dust cover does stay locked open and the release I've caught it on this side is ambidextrous as well uh, which is quite nice you've got that to access the rotary style hobby and it's not catching very efficiently so it should catch it's just not catching very efficiently um, but you have got a rotary style hop unit and it is rolled down for hop uh, which is quite firm actually to oh yeah there's quite a bit of firmness in there so it's not easily going to unwind or anything whilst um, shooting that's quite nice I'll wind that back off ready for testing we've then got unfortunately that's a little bit of a letdown that is a plastic ejection port cover let me just release that uh, not sure why they've skimped out on the plastic there when all the rest is such nice well cast sort of metal that that a little bit disappointing, but not the end of the world. It's just something to think about that maybe you want to keep an eye on that. I don't know how durable that's going to be. Um, so we've then got, obviously, a nice uh, ambidextrous mag catch as well. The pistol grip, a little bit, sh not sharp, but it is an edge on the pistol grip there. So you're potentially going to be catching that. So gloves will help, but particularly the corner here. And the corner there are potentially going to rub but i do like the curved trigger guard here to give you that extra room for if you've got gloves on the pistol grip is really nicely shaped though other than that a little bit of stippling effect on there just help with gloves and then onto the stock then so it's a bit of a, an unusual one so fully collapsed let's see what how many positions we've got nope one two three so it looks to be a three position stock this is also a battery compartment to which to access it we pull in the little clip and then bring down this bit I'll fully collapse that back in again and mm, a little bit disappointed in mini tamia but okay uh, there is the end of the uh, buffer tube so you've got a little bit of space in here and you've got space going down the buffer tube as well um possibly going to be quite limited in the battery that you can get in there but we will explore it shortly but initial impressions other than i'll be honest other than the mini tamia and the plastic dust cover i am pretty pretty impressed actually at the build quality i wasn't expecting it to be as solidly built as it is so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go and do the usual uh range check and everything uh, my eight point four and nine point six volt nim type batteries are uh, dead and gone unfortunately so it's just going to be 7.4 and 11.1 .1 rates of fire that i'm commenting on so i'll be back in a second to see how we got on
So minimum 359, maximum 363.7. It's fairly consistent. About 11 rounds a second. <laughs> Just shot 19 rounds a second. So I am back then. And uh, I do know that some 416s, uh, particularly the VFC sort of ones, are quite picky about mags that they like and want. Um, so in this one, I have tested their included high cap which fed absolutely fine as you would expect i tried this random i think it's sema could be wrong generic brand high cap fit and fed absolutely fine i tried this generic flash mag fit and fed absolutely fine and i even tried uh, a new pro high cap i got which fit and fed absolutely fine and then this which is also double bell from an spr um also fit and fed absolutely fine so i can say that this is not very picky about mags at all all of those are fit and fed absolutely fine i suspect that flash mag might be a battle axe one i suspect but i'm not 100 percent sure so then in terms of performance then out of this um in terms of the fps i believe this is factory standard fps i don't believe it's been you know worked on at all uh, so getting about 359.5 to 363.7 which actually that's like a what like a four fps variance that's a really tight grouping for fps particularly when it's new out of the box so i am quite impressed with that the range the range kind of blew me away it was easy over 50 meters now the the sort of range i've got um i can see out to about 50 meters after that i kind of lose it it was definitely hitting out to 50 meters and beyond uh with ease more or less so you are not going to be disappointed with it the sort of range that this is putting out and even i was a little bit taken about like Oh my lord, I didn't expect that. Um, did need quite a bit of adjustment to get it to lift the 0.25s, um, but it did hop them and there was still room left in there as well to go. Uh, so in terms of rate of fire then, uh, we're getting about 11.3 um, rounds per second or thereabouts on a 7.4 volt LiPo. Um, not terrible. It's about where I would expect it to be, um, sort of that like 11, 12, 13 rounds on a 7.4 volt totally fine uh, and then 11.1 as usual it kind of came alive a little bit there and we're getting about 18 and a half just over 18 and a half rounds a second close to 19 rounds a second again exactly where i would expect it to be but i felt like it really sort of came alive at that point then uh, and really sort of came into its own so overall i am really happy with the performance of it um what i will say as well is i don't know whether the body's muffling the sound or, or what but it sounds really smooth turning over. I don't know how well yet because I, you know, I've not not edited this together yet. I don't know how well my phone uh, microphone has picked up the sound of it shooting, but the sound of it is shooting shooting is quite smooth. I, I would suggest it's probably well assembled inside, uh, which is not always what you would expect. So moving on then, uh, we'll have a talk about battery space. So I've got some um, sort of stick types that I have got to see what we can get to fit inside of this stock. So let's have a look. So let's disconnect that. Now I've got a long um, 7.4. I've got a similar 11.1 as well. Now it will, mm, that is just too long unless I'm going to run the stock extended at least one or two positions. I think, yeah. The second or third position would need to be the minimum. So you've got space to get the wires over and tucked in and plugged in. So that one, if you want to, if you don't mind the stock extended, that one's a goer. In terms of the 1200 short, more than easily in there. In theory, I could have possibly even get it in there. If the, if the wire in. Uh. Mm. Maybe not, wiring is not quite going in. I've then got a 1000 milliamp giant power down the stock tube more than easily. Will it fully compressed? And even in the stock at the back there, again, with this sort of size of battery, you're probably going to need at least two um, 
to last you a day depending on how trigger happy you are and I'm very it's not actually going to go in there is it not quite it's not quite got the depth unless I wonder if I can even at that it won't quite go in the, the stock back is going to catch on that and then the 11.1 then will more than easily so you are looking at definitely needing some sort of uh, stock tube lipo then basically to just drop in there and to basically have the, the connectors sat in there so there are options out there it's just something to consider when you're doing this um, I mean to be fair if this wasn't I assume this is for a sling to go through and it, I did notice that there are no numbers on the stock positioning which is a real shame actually because it, it could have been you know quite nice to have the positioning numbers on, on the stock but but by the by you know it's um, if this had not been here, this could have been a space and you could have possibly got something in there maybe a little bit. I don't know. But then a lot of people might want the, the um, sling put in on there um, as well. So we'll get rid of this and we'll move to doing the gloved operation. So thanks to uh, sort of the guys on the Discord, particularly Laurent, for suggesting this to me. I do appreciate it. So gloves on them. I am happy then that initially, you know, these things are designed with sort of gloves in mind. I am sure that I can operate this with ease. Can get the mag in and out. From both sides without any issues in terms of the hop now i know i'm adjusting it but i can't tell you how fine a detail i'm adjusting it so it might be that 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 hop adjustment is something better done with your fingers exposed just so you know the adjustment that you're going for but there it is obviously holding it open i can operate that the stock i can easily operate as well um even getting the stock plate off as well i would say something to consider is maybe a little bit of tape over there because you know if you've got that up against your webbing that might get caught and that plate just drops off you might end up losing it and do you know what at first i wasn't keen on that stock but it's really growing on me now i really think it matches with the overall look and feel uh, of the rest of it but i can adjust the stock i can get into the stock easily enough and access uh, the battery space so i am really happy even getting the sights up if I'm running the sights is easy enough and I quite like the build of it it's really it's really grown on me actually I wasn't expecting to come away with liking this I thought I was just sort of you know stating the facts and like yeah it's not it's not my cup of tea but actually it's really grown on me really grown on me um so for what you get in it is a really solid build and I'll be excited to see how good the build is internally when we get to do the disassembly video um The two low points for me um, really were just the plastic dust cover, I thought a little bit disappointing, uh, ejection port cover even, and the um, mini Tamiya in the stock I thought was a little bit disappointing. Other than that, I think it's absolutely rock solid and I think there's some real potential in there. The range out of it is really, really good. Um, I just think you know th there is a lot of strong potential in there, even right out of the box. So I'll leave the usual photos at the end. I hope you've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed it immensely. I wasn't expecting to like it and I definitely do now. Uh, please do remember to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.